Hi everyone, I'm Trey Johnson and welcome to episode one of our series on Bleeding Kansas, the fight over the future of slavery in the United States. Bleeding Kansas is the origin story of our state. It's filled with drama, intense politics, perseverance, and of course, violence. Throughout this video, we'll be answering an essential question. How did the issue of slavery become so huge that it threatened to tear the nation apart? Today, we'll be talking about the lead up to Kansas becoming a territory, but to get an understanding of the struggle over slavery in Kansas, we first need to take a step back in time before Kansas was a territory, and even before the United States was a country. Two forms of cheap labor were available to fuel the agricultural economy in the British colonies, indentured servants and enslaved people. Indentured servants usually signed a five-year contract which provided free passage across the Atlantic Ocean and housing and food while they worked a plantation owner's land. At the end of those five years, the indentured servant was free to leave and pursue their own life. Enslaved people had no contract, worked for life, and were not allowed to leave. Planters and merchants depended on this system, and as the economy grew, the need for cheap forced labor expanded as well. Enslaved Africans were taken from their homelands and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean by slave traders in a horrific journey called the Middle Passage. More than one third of these captive people died from disease and malnutrition before they even reached America. So let's take a moment to have a difficult discussion about the realities of slavery. Many enslaved people had limited control over their lives and were forced to work with the threat of violence, sometimes death, from sunup to sundown with no pay and no rights. Most enslaved people received poor clothing, shelter, and food, and many slaveholders maintained their control with whippings and beatings. Slaveholders could break up families without warning by selling family members or by giving them away to friends and family. These people had no rights and were viewed and treated as property. Now this doesn't mean that enslaved people were without agency or the power to influence their own lives, and this is very important. They did what they could to improve their own lives. They created families, sang songs, played music, and married, even though it wasn't recognized by the law. Enslaved people resisted the system of slavery too, sometimes by working slowly, pretending to be sick, singing songs with hidden meanings, and learning how to read and write. Many risked their lives trying to escape, and some organized rebellions and uprisings, which struck fear into the hearts of slaveholders. As the number of enslaved people continued to rise, the colonies enacted laws to keep the system of slavery in place. By the time of the Revolutionary War and the creation of the United States, the institution of slavery was enshrined in its founding documents. In the final version of the U.S. Declaration of Independence in 1776, a statement condemning slavery was removed to appease two slave states. A decade later, a compromise on the issue of slavery played an important part in getting the U.S. Constitution passed. Population in each state determines the number of electoral votes and congressional representatives each state receives. Both the North and the South saw this as a measure of the power they would have in the federal government, and each wanted more than the other. If the South included enslaved people as part of their population, southern states would have more power. If enslaved people were not counted, northern states would have more power. The North argued that if the number of enslaved people counted towards electoral votes and congressional representation, that enslaved people should be made citizens and allowed to vote. The result of this debate was the Three-Fifths Compromise, found in Article I of the U.S. Constitution. This compromise allowed three-fifths of each state's enslaved population to count towards congressional representation, thus creating a balance of power between the North and the South in Congress. This was just the first in a series of compromises that attempted to keep the United States from tearing itself apart. In our next episode, we'll take a look into the rest of these compromises and find out how Kansas became the focus of the entire nation. We'll see you next time.